Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello everybody and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name's Andy, Corporate Commander TFW, and I join you from 2019. It's the first show of the new year and I'm joined this week by the newly reforged Mikey G. Wolf 3 Hello, Mikey. Hello. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the year Bruce Wayne nearly shot a guy. Yeah, he used a gun. <laughs> yep. Batman Beyond or Batman of the Future. That me was Batman Beyond. Yeah, like, it was. It was only uh, here that it was called the future, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was really weird. You like the ads here were hilarious because it would be just like, "It's time for Batman. It's time for a Batman Beyond. It's time for Batman of the Future." And I was just waiting for like, "It's time for Batman Mark Two Point Nine. <laughs> it's time for Batman." They went on with this over, because they had to say Batman Beyond because that was the legal name, but it was being marketed as Batman of the Future, so they had to end on that. Really? Oh, that's yeah. weird. I didn't know that. And it was. I don't know if it was the same in the UK, but in Ireland it was just like, yeah. Huh. <laughs> but, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, in 2019, when that uh, series starts, Batman pulls a gun on something and uh, goes to shoot him in the face because he has a heart attack in the middle of saving a lady. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't take it well. And then bitterness ensues and he becomes a man chasing children off his lawn. To be fair, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot... He becomes a lot older after that point. It's a good few yeah. years uh, since... He put down the cape before Terry kind of pops in. Yeah. Did it? Did they ever say how? I can't remember how many years it was. It probably did say. It probably did. Remember. But it's been a, a while since I've watched the first episode. Good show. I think the, show, the only the only DC show I never really got into was Static Shock. I tried. Uh, there was one as well, the Zeta Project, which spun oh, out of Batman no, Beyond. That was terrible. That doesn't count. Um, the best thing about Zeta <laughs> Project is that the robots, their design, showed up in a Justice League episode with uh, the question in it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Static Shock was okay. I just, I think it suffered kind of that I didn't, don't think it knew what it wanted to be. Mm. See, I thought it, it knew what it wanted to be. It wanted to be very political and diverse. It's, it, yeah. I think that's what it was aiming to do. And I think it did that I don't better think it handled than that... a lot of shows. Yeah, I don't think it handled it that well. I think, well, when I say it, I think it did it better than most shows. I think it did it better than most shows I'd seen up to that point. What, by having any diversity at all? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, was, it was all right, but... It was okay. Yeah. I like just not one of my favorite. Apparently they want to do a static um, movie at some point, but... Really? Who remembers yeah. Static Shock apart was... from, like, fucking nerds? They're, well, nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but he was popular for his time. Yeah, really? I don't, huh. I don't think... Did he stay around in the comics? Oh, probably. Because I haven't... Anytime I've dipped into DC, I haven't seen him, you know, ooh, ever. He's probably <laughs> been, like, usurped by Black Lightning, I would guess, because he probably. was the, the adult version, effectively, yeah, of Static Bl Shock. And Black Lightning is a thing again since the TV show. Yeah. Which I still haven't seen an episode of. I, yeah. I heard it's okay, but I just haven't checked it out. I'm done with live action. <laughs> done with it. <laughs> Something happened over Christmas that made you go like, why am I wasting my time with this bullshit? No, no, it happened a long, uh, a while ago at this point. <laughs> I, 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 what was it? It was either um, the Heroes... No, what's the time travel one called? The time travel one. Yeah. Where they've got the Doctor Who guy playing uh, a time travel dude. Doctor and it's got all the bad guys in, but they're good guys now. They fought Barry Savage, who's actually called Vandal Savage in the first series. Heroes of Tomorrow? Is that what it is? Legends of... Oh, Legends. Legends of Tomorrow. I think that's what killed it for me. And a really poor uh, third season of Flash. Mm, I haven't seen... I I don't think I've seen an episode of the new Flash, which I, is saying something considering how into it I used to be. See, I, as long as Joe, the dad, still looks mm. like he's about to cry every episode, that's that's all <laughs> they should. If they if they've dropped that, they've failed. <laughs> sad, a sad the... cop dad. He was always on the verge of tears every yeah. episode. Because that's what a good cop dad does. He he always almost cries but doesn't. <laughs> You just see a puppy on the stream. Be... <laughs> my my question is: Is Arrow in the not murdering phase or murdering phase of their narrative yet? I don't know. Maybe I have no idea what's going on in that show. 
No, I, I all I the last thing I knew was they got Bison from the Legend of Chun Li movie to be in as a bad guy, but not as Bison. bison. Hmm. I, I, you see, you lost me there. I said I asked if it was Bison. You said it wasn't Bison, and I just no, it was merely the uh, Richard Donner. Yeah, that's right, Richard Donner, because we mm. uh, I always call him the Donner Kebab. <laughs> Ah, they don't have kebab. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that stuff uh, this week. We're here to talk about Transformers because it's the new year and there's new Transformers to kind of roll along with. It not well, roll not out. new. No, no. We. I was roll gonna. Out I was news, gonna, Andy. I was gonna say we're better than that, but we're really not. <laughs> so let's let's not kid ourselves. You know, I want to put on the air that we are, but yeah, we're not. We're not. Uh, we're gonna kick off with Zeta Toys Legends scaled Cybertronian bar. <laughs> right. Um, it's a bit of a different one, but I'll give them gumption for being a little bit different. I'm all up for different. Yeah. Uh, so what this is is it's Zed Toys. Uh, it it, it kind of came up during their or through their Weibo page and their Facebook page as well, showcasing a Cybertronian bar which includes two bar chairs, three tables, one bottle. That's a pretty poor bar, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, four cups, not glasses, cups. Uh, one tray and one music player, uh, a tiny sound wave, and a Decepticon throne. Well, naturally. Yeah. That... I mean, it's not a bar without a dictatorial figure sitting in the back, is it? <laughs> Megatron's bar would be proud. <laughs> Megatron's bar, where you just sit in the chair and get your photo taken. Have you seen the image where they've got the, the throne in the middle and they've actually pixelated yeah. it? Are we assuming yeah. that's for copyright reasons? I think so. I think so. Uh, I think it's not pixelated in the one with Starscream because he's blocking a lot of it. Yeah. Um, that's weird. I, mean, I guess it makes sense, but that's... A... Yeah. It also <laughs> it means they're being a bit riskier than most. I mean, <laughs> the ri- I think yeah, the riskiest cause... thing in terms of copyright infringement we've seen is Tarn, just because it's Oh, Tarn. the faceplate. Yeah. 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 But um, it's, it's warped enough they get away with it. But... Sure. Also, yeah, I'm just looking through it now. Like, I'm disappointed it won't come with a like dance effects. <laughs> what 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 does Mikey like, consider dis- as dance effects? I'm just looking through what they have here. They've got like disco lighting and like apparently Jazz, who appears to be running the bar, has gotten drunk, climbed up on the desk, and is dancing while Shockwave is basically depressingly taking over his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I guess the, the lights you you probably have to add yourself. You know. Ah. <laughs> that's up to you. Uh, what do you What do you think of this little bar then? Because it is a mo- it's, it, it's worth mentioning as well. It's modular, so you can pull the the mm. desks apart and slap them together in multiple shapes and all that kind of stuff. It's It's very likely they want you to buy more than one. I would suspect so, because mm. uh, it's um, shown no. it, co- it it's shown to have flooring, but I'm assuming mm. it doesn't come with the flooring. I don't know. That might be might be something. I think that's a separate thing. But I think it's neat. I love stuff like this. It's fun. I'm also kind of glad it doesn't come with like a an, a swerve included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no because, one, well, you know, no one's done a swerve yet for Legend no, Scale. No, true. But it's not like Zeta Toys are secretly doing their swerve. Didn't think anyone would buy it unless they included a bar. <laughs> um, but I like it. And I like that it's not really intended to go with any one set. Because they've got Iron Factory. I think they've got some other guys in here. D. What are the names? Oh no, it's just Iron Factory yeah, just for this a, one. Yeah, yeah, just Iron but, Factory. But I can't imagine the the other stuff wouldn't work as long as it's, as long as it's you know scale. legend scale. Yeah. yeah. But no, I think it's really neat. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it as well. It's yeah. maybe a bit uh, dark in its its color for Autobots, maybe because the color of it's it, just I, like onyxy black kind of stuff. And it and it does come with an evil chair. And with uh, the the bottles and the glasses, even though they're cold cups for some reason, are purple. Like a a dark, not like Energon purple, but like a dark purple purple. Mm. And like you say, the the Sinister Throne again. Who's the Decepticon who could be a bartender? Uh, Scorponok. No, he'd never be able to hold glasses. That's the point. (laughs) Shockwave, because he'd only have one hand to do everything. He's, and he's constantly knocking things over with his gun arm. Yeah, oh, and because he's got no death perception. <laughs> he thought it would be logical to open a bar. He, he was wrong. <laughs> I must study social interaction. Oh, Scalpel from the movies. Oh, Jesus. Because he'd be tiny and incapable of lifting no, up any glasses. No, no, he's the waiter. Oh, 
I will get them the drinks. You will have the drinks <laughs> through your eyes. As he's just scuttling along the floor with the tray above his head. Nee. I am German. <laughs> he was Did very he was very German from what I recall from the movie, wasn't he? He was exceptionally German. Yeah. I've rewatched the action scenes from those movies recently Ooh, for no. research purposes. Oh no. Um yeah, but my god was he German. He was the most <laughs> racist evil German. He was nineteen fifties World War Two movie evil German. I, I he was the most racist evil German, and then I think they did have Hitler in movies. That... <laughs> Yeah, but like they generally just had him there as Hitler. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can't really do a caricature of Hitler. He literally was one. <laughs> like I've seen the rallies. Dude, dude was weird. You know, they did a caricature of him from Little Nicky, where they kept shoving pineapples up his ass. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That movie was really bad. Well, it was it was an Adam Sandler movie, so you and know he, he had the lisp. Oh God, yeah. Because he was Satan's nice son. And so, Satan was sleeping with a guy with boobs on his head. That's right. Yeah, and it was dark. That was a, that was a weird film. Yeah, but like, I remember Adam Sandler was getting, like, kind of lucky with some really weird movies. Like, The Waterboy mm. is a weird movie. Oh, yeah. Like, him screaming about alligators under Abdullah Ablangada. How did Adam Sandler get work? I don't, because he's willing to do terrible movies. I guess. And the last thing I think he did was Jill and Jane or whatever? Uh, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. And then he did like one serious movie and no one... It was kind of like when um, Leslie Nielsen would do serious movies. People said, oh, it wasn't very good. Why? I was waiting for the joke. <laughs> and I was just like, there was no joke. You don't get it. I was doing a serious piece. For God's well, that's sake. That's funny. No. I know. <laughs> Uh, well, back onto the bar. There's no information mm -hmm. on when it's getting released uh, or how much it's going to be. I would guess like forty to fifty pounds, probably. Yeah, I'd say that's something like that. Pretty standard. Just because the amount you get, if it's more than that, if it's more sixty pounds, that's a bit more mm. of a frowny face, Andy. I would say. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any other thoughts, Mikey? Or do you want to take us on to the uh, the next two bits of news? I'll take us on because Shockwave Lab has revealed images of SL38, Sword of Power of the Primes, um, which is a sword for Predaking. Um, now, I originally thought this might be a bit of a dodgy knockoff of the one that's coming out of China, the official one. Mm. Um, but it seems to be original mode, seems to be very detailed. It's got like Cybertronian etchings. It's got a lot of like, I don't know what that is. It's like a grill structure down the blade. Um, and anyway, they, it's painted up to the nines, really nice gold color. I don't have a lot to say to this. I mean, it's a giant sword for Titan class figure that looks ridiculous when he tries to store it. Um, but it does look good. Uh, I, I don't think I'd ever want it. Uh, but well, you, to I be fair, nice you don't have a Predaking, so it would be a little bit odd for you just to have a Predaking sword. Just to give to us. Like, it's going to be a two foot long sword as well. It's pretty big. Yeah, that's like a proper shank. <laughs> like It's a prison shank. <laughs> just give it to my niece and say, you you will now fight for your independence. <laughs> you will fight the rats on the farm. It is for the spirit, with the animal spirit within you. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her there, out in the cold at night with this. And she's just looking back at me, what the fuck? <laughs> if she comes back, she'll be stronger than she was before. But just door swings open in the morning. She's covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say anything. She just crawls in, dragging the sword behind, drops it at my feet, looks me in the eye and leaves. Like that baby in Samurai Jack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the baby who saw too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I think this is neat. I think this is... It looks pretty solid. I just... I, this kind of stuff on its own never interests me for anything. No. Um, Andy, what what's your thoughts on it? It is a sword. But Andy, it's a big sword. That is true. It is, in fact, a big sword. Uh, you've mm. got me there. Um, it looks fine. Uh, because I don't have the Predaking, it doesn't hold much interest for me. But I suppose if you are someone that has this Predaking uh, and got really pissy that the um, the eastern one, the one coming into Asia, came with the sword or came with a sword, mm. this is at least something you can give to your Predaking because he, he, I think Predaking should have a sword, you know. That's yeah, kind I of the, the guy big, he is. 
bit odd without it, to be honest. Yeah, he's definitely missing it. Uh, so it is. I I don't think it's a terrible rendition of his sword. I like the is it is it Cybertronian that he's got on his blade. Is yeah, I'm is? assuming so. Yeah, not just random squiggles. Um, yeah, just looks... says just says make America great again. Oh, I thought you were going to say it just it just has his name belongs to please return to. <laughs> oh no, he's like the Joker from Bloody Suicide Squad. He's just oh no, he's just putting it everywhere. Ew. <laughs> we talked a lot about Suicide Squad last night, didn't we? Mm. Too much. Mm. Uh, shall... mm. Oh no, you've got another bit of uh, news to talk about. Yes, um, because Toy World have a preview silhouette of an upcoming figure and an upcoming combiner. Who is it? Uh, in in the vein of what we just talked about, they're doing a Predaking! Wow! Which is more like, what, the fifth one? Fourth one? more? I don't know. But he doesn't have spiky knuckles. It's obviously the worst one. <laughs> um, but yeah, though, Toy World, I heard they were doing one, but I'd actually thought, like, I'd seen some preview images that were these, like, little chibi Predacons. Hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, I'd be kind of into a chibi Predaking, and it doesn't look like this is that guy. Oh, okay. So, boo. Um, but yeah, so they have the preview silhouette of Revoltger, which is their Rampage, who does interest me in one way. Explain. Right? Um, going by the silhouette, he has sort of a Zoid cannon on his back, yeah. which Rampage don't got. <laughs> and he seems to be a saber tooth. Okay. Which Rampage ain't. No, that's true. So if they're stylizing this a fair bit, I'd be, you know, I'd be curious. Mm -hmm. Um, If they do, as I said, with every time they do one of these guys, if they do one black and gold, it'll be happier. But <laughs> If only. You'll never will. No. Nope. You'll never will. You did him in fucking Nemesis colors before you did him in that. <sighs> Who wanted a Nemesis Predaking? Um, Who? I don't no know. One. Bad people. No one. But Andy, um, are you a flame? For Kika? Uh, not really. Uh, at this point, it's it's certainly late in the game. So they, they're going to have to have some pretty good game, you know, mm. to make this stand out from all the other previous ones, I would say. Mm. I think that's fair. In which case, Andy. Yes. Take us on to more third-party stuff. Yeah, um, it's a repaint. It's a repaint... Uh, from Perfect Effect, the PE-DX06B Nemesis Gorira. And it, it's just how it's spelled. Uh, it is a redo, obviously, of Beast Gorira, uh, which was the Beast Wars Optimal Optimus. Uh, and now they're doing it into a, what they class as a, in, in quotations, I'm going to say, Nemesis colors, but it's just basically Optimus Primal color. Mm. So he's got red knees and white hips and the... Uh, blue head and you know all that kind of jazz uh i can't say it's a huge shock especially since they did this to the san diego comic-con one the official figure i think that's why they're doing this to be honest but i, I, think, I think so did they do primal prime uh who did perfect effect did they what do you mean primal prime the red the red and blue one. Oh, the machine wars one um i'm going to look i think so because i was going to say that's the obvious repaint so did yeah. yeah 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 they uh, did Six oh six P. Oh, so all right. Well, yeah. There you go. It's a black redeco, uh, oh. using the remolded faceplate head that came with Gorilla Prime, which I'm guessing is the one you mentioned. I'm assuming so. Yeah. So if you want this one, if you want your your optimal Optimuses to be Optimus Primal colored, you can get this. Though wasn't this a bit of a ropey release? Um, I heard it had some shaking. Uh, some shaking, some solidity problems in robot mode. Right. Uh, around the hips, there was a lot of movement and everything else. Um, from what I understand, the Megatron is a whole other bargain. Yeah, I watched Jobby's review and it seems mm. like it's a, a tight big boy. Tight. As he, as he says. Um, yes, yes. The, the last surviving catchphrase. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> For now. For now. Um, but yeah, hopefully they've improved the quality a bit because it's a really cool design. It's just a bit of a shame it's let down by that. Hmm. Um, pre-orders are up for this guy, but it's only on, like, deposit, $2, and you can have it. <laughs> like, $2? That's wow, it? Wow, <laughs> for this whole figure? I'll pay that. I don't trust you. <laughs> no, you lie. You lie? Uh, I got nothing else. Uh, yeah, Mikey, in that you case, got stuff? Uh, New Age Toys have their NH3 legend-scaled prowl called Harry. Why? 
I don't know. He's following on from Flipper, which is the Bumblebee. Is it meant to be like uh, Dirty Harry? Maybe, maybe. Was, was... Oh, Andy, you may. He's like, oh, oh, Andy, you're using your your human brain. Yeah, uh, not the reptilian one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so this is a prowl. Uh, these guys are the ones who did a bumblebee that everyone flipped the fuck out about. Yeah, a lot of people dropped their shit for that bumblebee. Uh, I never yeah. did because I don't care for bumblebee. So. Yeah, but um, which makes me curious about this guy because looking at these pictures for a legends guy. This guy is not so articulated. He does not look, like, from the images, he does not look like a Legends figure, just from the no. amount of ball joints and, and just joints in general he seems to have. No, he looks, like, like he looks together. He looks, he's got his shindig down. He comes with a bunch of weapons. He's got his very, I'd say more to toy accurate, accurate, toy accurate um, vehicle mode. But, uh, yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm looking at this guy. I am seeing something that looks like it could be a bit special. There's only one problem I see from this. Mm -hmm. And it's not... I, I guess it's not a problem. It's... Are you about to say he's not in scale with a Volkswagen? Because no one cares. No, I no, I wasn't going to actually mention that. <laughs> I was going to say that we're going to get repaints of him into Blue Streak and... Um, You'll get Blue Streak, one. Smoke Screen, Silver Streak. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, Is there any more? There's probably like a Diaclone. Oh, red version, version of Prowl. something. Yeah, probably. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, you'd probably there's probably a couple of IDW characters he could be done up as. Really? Probably. Hmm. They used enough repaints back in the day. Probably. Uh, I I hope it doesn't go down that path, but I could easily <laughs> see it happening. Yeah. Um, no, I will definitely get some smoke screen and blue streak. There's and it, no doubt made in my mind. It, uh, it does have the problem as well for me being Prowl, and I don't care that hmm. much about Prowl. I do like Prowl, but not this Prowl. Eh. I like the Prowl that's a big chunky dickhead. Okay. <laughs> this is just classic generation one dickhead. It's weird because I am slightly tempted by it because it does look really mm. good. No, it looks like a really solid figure. Yeah. I'm interested to hear how it kind of pans out when it comes out in the not too distant mm. future. Mm. And like I said, like, um, Bumblebee was so well received. I think it's one we're going to at least keep an eye on. It was um, number two that they did. I don't know. I'm they wondering got if they're one doing... and three. So. I'm, I'm wondering if they're doing that thing where they keep, you know, jumping... Jumping numbers, because some people do do that. But do you think I'm it's because this one got ready faster than number two? Maybe, but then I would just have relabeled this. Shh, you need <laughs> Maybe to be gold. quiet. Is there a gold bug? Logic. Hang on, hang on. Is there a gold bug? There is a gold bug, but that couldn't... Is that what they classed as two? N Because there was Because there was a gold bug, and there was a... Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, NH2 teaser. The... Oh, okay. So we've got an NH2 teaser. The... Oh. It's a shockwave. Oh. That they haven't released. Oh. Wh whose teaser image is a Shockwave CAD model with what I can only call someone putting on bondage gloves behind him. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm tentative to ask, but can you send me the image? Yes, Andy. And you will see what I have seen because that's not, that's not a glove that has any purpose beyond things gloves should not be doing. Fishing. Fishing. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I sent you an image of someone painting their eye. Why would anyone do that? Beauty, Mikey. She's Beauty. Not beautiful. Use <laughs> oh, mascara. Damn, damn Mikey. <laughs> that Use <harsh. laughs> fucking mascara. You deaf. Word. Yeah, like when I when I say to you, the listener, drawing on her eye. I mean, like literally on the white literally. part. Oh wow, that is a black glove. That is the like. Okay, Mister Wave. Uh, if you could just bend over. I, I have seen, um, like, tattoo artists use gloves like that, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, they do. really have not shown much of Shockwave, have they? No. Uh, right, I, I'm I, I'm much more interested in what they, they will do for a Shockwave, because um, mm. I missed out on getting the Iron Factory Shockwave, and now he seems to be quite hard to come by. Uh, mm. So, like, you know, if these guys are as good as everybody says they are, maybe they'll do a decent Shockwave and make me want to buy it, eh? Maybe you uh, produce a high-quality figure and we get in Pokemon Falls and then spend our money on it. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else, Mikey? Nope. Take us on, Andy. Right, Mr. Mikey. Iron Warrior. IW05 Pioneer. We have finally the coloured images of the non-transforming Action Master. <laughs> I said that, not not anything. Fuck off, story. fuck off, Andy. You go, you go to hell. You go to hell and you die. Uh, 
Well, fingers crossed. I'm just uh, going to say, scrolling <laughs> through this thread when this oh, came out was painful. I, I will I will probe you on, on the thread uh, in mere moments once we've talked about the figure. Yes, it's the, the Transformers Prime, Optimus Prime figure. The, the non-transforming one, as mentioned. The one me and Mikey have been fairly excited for, but much more excited for the Megatron. Oh, yes. Because like, I'm Megatron excited that this guy will lead to Megatron. Yes. Because, mm. you know, this Prime has a great design, but he, you know, it, it was and in that time period where they, and I guess still do for the most part, at least media-wise, uh, mm. don't want to have Prime as an actual character. They only want to have him as a character in the comic books. And people no, Andy, angry. Andy, he's boring and perfect, and he says so little in anything he's in. We can't make him a character. Preview for later. But but even Prime and G1 had more character. No, Andy. No, no, he doesn't have character. He built a fucking snowman. No, Andy, he didn't. You saw... He played basketball thing. with the Dinobots. No, no, he didn't... He 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 doesn't have fun, Andy. Didn't he throw a snowball at Spike that was like no. five times the size of him? <laughs> and like, if that was if that happened in real life, Spike died. <laughs> There'd just be a bloody smear of snow. <laughs> I heard humans put rocks in their snowballs. <laughs> Jesus Prime, you murderer! <laughs> I'm still your dad. Because Sparklug doesn't look after you. Do you think he dropped out of G1 because he just went to the bar and started drinking? Oh, Jesus. Because his robot took his son away from him. <laughs> There's a reason Carly was introduced and Sparkplug was never at the wedding. <laughs> How do you think Chip got crippled in the first place? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, Mikey, what do you think of Optimus Prime? Shit. <laughs> Looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty, looks pretty damn good. Yeah, comes um, with both guns. He comes with yeah. uh, both faces, masked and unmasked. He comes with the uh, Star Saber. Is that what it was called? Yes, yes. Uh, it comes in a a glowy version and a non glowy version. I prefer the non glowy version, to be honest. Yes. The, the glowy version looks a bit tacky, I suppose. Yes. Uh, and he seems to come with a few different hand options as well. So, give us your thoughts, Mikey. What do you think? Um, first of all, I heard they might be redoing the face to make the faceplate a little better. Okay, yeah, I could see that. It's a, it's it's not it's not terrible, Her, but it's it's not terrible, but it's very clearly just a bit they slid on. Yeah. Um, but he hardly ever used the bloody thing, so even when he was in a fight, he mm. kept, he he there were plenty where he didn't have it on. Um, but yeah, uh, this looks this looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, articulations through the roof. The accessories are on point. The figure looks on model. Um, overall, yeah, uh, the price is going to be ninety nine eighty. Um, I don't think that's awful, considering how much these things will cut. Like, considering how much, like, what? Lo assuming the quality's there, a figure like this would cost if you got it from Japan from another company. Once you factor in license and everything else, this yeah. is kind of. Amazing how much it priced. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Like, if you're going to compare this to anything, you kind of got to put it up against Flame Toys. And I'm hoping the quality is there. And if it's cheaper yeah. than that, then that's great. That's yeah, really like, it, it doesn't have to be Flame Toys quality. It just has to be quality for its price. Yeah. Um, but it looked really, really freaking good. And I, I, I like, this is a great Optimus design. It wasn't on a great character, but it was on a great design. Yeah. In a, in a really good show. So I do have a lot of attachment to it. Um, but yeah, I am super looking forward to Megatron. Hmm, yeah. And, um, and you know, as uh, we mentioned in a previous episode, I think Mikey would certainly like to see a, uh, a knockout done. Yeah, yeah. Do a whole suit. Like, if they did, a, a like, a show-accurate sound wave. Yeah, yeah. That could yeah. be, yeah, that'd be nice as well. Oh, hey, Andy, do you want an arachnid toy? Uh, oh, one that's not, you know, trash. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> And they could even work in a little bit of transformation with her because you just like, oh, look, you put her butt together and then her, her spider legs become legs. And look, it's her alt mode. Hey! I think you're wishing for a bit too much there at that point. <laughs> um, what? Hang on. This woman's skirt comes together. It's madness. <laughs> madness. My, my concern would be if mm. they, luckily, because we know they're doing a Megatron, it, it's not going to go down this route. But um, a concern that would be in my head would be, okay, we're just... Just gonna do the Decepticons. Mm. Uh, sorry, just do the Autobots because that's usually the the easy option that they go for. My concern would be they just do the two leaders or Bumblebee, Prime or and Bumblebee, Bumblebee and Megatron, and that's it. Yeah, 
Because, like, even if you're just sticking to the main cast, you've got so many characters you could be doing. Yeah. Um, And I, I'd really like to see this whole thing take off, because Prime is getting so little attention, and it really deserves more. Is it getting little attention? It has been quite a few years since Prime was on, as it, horrifying no, like, it is to say. Like, we're getting third-party movie figures, we're getting third... We, we've gotten at least design oh. sketches for several third-party animated figures, only I, some of which came to pass. <laughs> I see what but you're saying, yeah. It's one of those things where Prime has basically... It ended, and then it went off the radar, despite the fact that when it ended, it included several characters that were, you know, big fan favorites. Mm. I mean, they're the reason they came into IDW, some of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, it would be nice, but maybe it's too early to do them because we haven't really had a big Beast Wars boom. We're getting it now, mm. uh, but there's still not really been a, a Unicron trilogy True. stuff. The, again, we're getting drips and drabs now, and no RID stuff at all, maybe? Has no. been much of yeah, no, I don't think any. Uh, if there has been, it's been very limited. I no, there so. hasn't even been a skybite. No, and that would be the the most important one. Uh, so, uh, How, to be however, fair, in fairness, there have been repaints of Baldigus or for Baldigus, so that um, but no, that's uh, because it's a repaint. One, I go eh. There was one skybite. Was there? Captain oh, Shark. yeah, yeah. The yeah. disappointment. Yeah. Um. And it, I mean, you could, it's official third party, but I am counting that little naked Thai statue where Skybite was in the pond with her. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it happened, and none of you can make it not have. Least as at least does not forget the shame. Uh. Well, Mr. Mikey, do you want to take us on to the next bit of news? Yes. Uh. So on to some movie news. Lorenzo but the Bonaventura is still talking. Oh God! He has Why been entertaining you, to be fair. Oh my God! It's it's been like watching a car crash, except the guy keeps reversing back and driving into the same wall each <laughs> time, thinking that there's different result. Yeah. Um. So in the last few weeks, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who is one of the producers on Bumblebee, and I say one because that movie has a lot of producers. I doubt he's even the most significant one on there. Ooh. Um, to be completely honest, seeing the film's influence, I think other people may have had more effect, like Steven Spielberg. Hmm. Um, but, so he, he's been doing the circuit, and he has been commenting on things. First of all, he decided, uh, is Bumblebee a reboot or a prequel? The first thing he said, reboot? I mean, what's a reboot? I mean, I don't, I, this is a direct quote, I don't really get what that word means. Yes, you do. You're not an idiot, hopefully. And then he went on for about a paragraph about this. And which basically comes <laughs> out to like, producer talk, producer talk, producer talk, producer talk, I don't want to say. I, do, I, I like, you know, and then he just said, oh, and I hate Unicron. And we're just like, but he was in your movie. Mm. That you, you helped put him in the movie. <laughs> and then he came out and said, it's 100% a prequel. Everything's fine. I can totally see, see all those scenes. Here's how all those scenes, they all work together. And there's no problem with this film whatsoever. It's fine, 100% in continuity. And then it became very obvious he didn't seem to have under... Either he hasn't understood those scenes or he hasn't actually seen the film. Uh, I, c I could believe both, to be fair. I think, yeah. Because <laughs> it, I'm not, the, it, it depends, the, like, how much he actually does as a producer. Yeah, and at this stage, I think he's more a... Uh, this is the guy you know who talks to the press. Hmm. Um, but... He he was basically just it had this real vibe of a guy just like it's a prequel why because and so he's he's come out again like Vangelis was great about this on WTF yeah I think he I think he may be hunting him down <laughs> I think somewhere in Canada there's a plan being made um, but he came out again this week and this is probably the 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 one that he says things and again. Quoting Vangelis, he's clearly heard these words before, and I don't know if he actually knows what they mean. Mm. Um, and apparently he says Gen 1 instead of G1. <laughs> oh, the piece of shit. Piece of piss. Um, but so, um, he's quoted as saying, they're probably going to make a Bumblebee sequel, and they're probably going to make another bigger mo Transformers movie in the future. Well done, Lorenzo, for figuring that out. Yeah. yeah. Um... He also said he hasn't. There is an animated movie in the writing stage. They're trying to figure out their Optimus Prime movie, which he said is really hard because Optimus Prime is too perfect and always oh right. And I and I think we were the one who said like, and somewhere the slide is like having to be gagged, and she's like <laughs> flailing and screaming into like Pyrus' hands. I'll kill him. Um, 
And, oh, this one. While the Beast Wars franchise has a chance to. Huh. Um, so he's hinting at a Beast Wars movie. Why? Um, so we, We'll talk about that in a second. So okay. he's hinting, basically, that there are f- at least five movies on the, uh, at least at the the thought, the introduction stage. So we've got a Bumblebee sequel, we've got an animated film, we've got an Optimus Prime film, we've got a larger scale Transformers movie, and we've got a potential Beast Wars film, at least someone's put it on the table. And then he said this is, um, he stressed this will only happen under one condition. Bumblebee must be a success. Which caused people to freak the fuck out because people are screaming high above the hills that this movie is a financial disaster. I don't think it has been, though, has it? I was bored one evening and I did the maths. Okay. So, basically, it's opening weekend. It earned twice as much as the last night. Mm. Um, it's opening week. That continued, basically. It ended up at 40 grand at the end of the opening week. Um... Last night ended up at twenty six grand, and last night was showing in more film uh, or in more cinemas. Um, after the fortnight, both films were at about eighty five thousand. Right. You do projections and p- factor in um, foreign grosses and everything else. Even though foreign gross is not making up nearly as much of Bumblebee's take as it was for last night. Now last night was like twenty percent domestic. Uh, whereas Bumblebee is 50. Um, Bumblebee is very likely... It's currently at 192,000. It's very likely to settle out, especially once you get like, March, when Japan gets its final release, at about somewhere between 420 to 500 million. Yeah. Which is, you know, it also has a, the smallest budget of every, any Transformers film, which means that it's already heading up to at least the... We're covering our advertising budget. So I... Basically, it's going to make money. It may not make a huge wad of money, but it will make money. Hopefully, they'll continue running with this style uh, and not go, right, it made money. Quick, grab Michael Bay. Mm. Uh, Because I would like to see more movies like this. Um, Yeah, but Andy, I mean, Beast Wars movie. Yeah, Beast Wars movie. Is this going to be like someone from Disney, The Lion King, comes over and just like, look at these photorealistic lions. The li- Explode the, the into The live animals. action. It's live action. Because... Oh, no, Andy. Did you, oh, did you hear, like, tangent, but did you hear the producers come out and said they're trying to invent a new term for what it is because it's not animated? Yeah, it's called CGI. <laughs> no, no, it's not animated, Andy. They're, they're saying like, oh, we've invented an entirely new type of film it's not. where everything's real but done with computers. Yeah, it's called realistic CGI. <laughs> No, it's no Andy. It's not no. See, that's animation, Andy. Right. This is a live action remake. Right. What's live about it? They're using computers. The uh-huh. computers are on. Did anybody see Final Fantasy: The The Spirit Within? Because <laughs> like, at least with the Jungle Book movie, there was something alive in there, something One... that existed. <laughs> One single speck of life. Yeah. See, so, I you know. I'd let it slide and go like, okay, I'll begrudgingly say that's a live action movie because there's one human element in there. He's basically the, he's the reverse Gollum. <laughs> you know, he's the one thing that's alive in the movie. Um, Fucking Disney bullshit. Oh, the, the, it's going to be bad anyway. They're all bad. I'm there, I said it, by the way. Disney's live action remakes. None of them are very good. I heard Mary Poppins was quite atrocious. <laughs> yes, as you remade a live action movie. It was a sequel though, wasn't it? No. It was technically a sequel, but according to all reviews, it is basically just redoing Mary Poppins. Oh no. It's a Force Awakens. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> We're redoing that movie you love. Why? Do a different movie. Just watch the original. It's really good. Julie, it's old, Julie Andrews is really good. But it's old, Andy. So? It was old when I saw it. But it's old. Yeah, I know. It was fucking old when I saw it. But Andy, you're not hearing me. Yeah, it's old. It's old. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, I think not... the, there was a movie that they should have remade, but they and they did, but they remade it poorly, and that was Pete's Dragon, because Pete's Dragon yeah. was a bit shit back in the day, yeah. and it was it was sh- it was somehow shitter when they remade it. <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe just put Pete's Dragon to bed, put put a gun <laughs> to its head, and just be like, I'm sorry, Mr. Dragon, you've you've got to die. It's a Pete's Dragon sequel, which is the boy discovering he actually has a severe mental illness. No, the Pete's Dragon sequel is a crossover with Dragonheart. Oh my god. So you have Sean Connery Dragon as well? <laughs> Hello there. 
I'm just very confused why um, Elliot's not talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like a like people wanted a Beast Wars movie. I mean, people have asked for it. I mean, I'm not against the idea of of having a Beast Wars movie at all. Uh, the thing I'd li- I'd like them to do a Transformers movie that's amazing first before mm. moving on to Beast Wars. Like from what I've heard, everybody says good things about Bumblebee. Yeah, uh, but I I have a I, I suspect because I haven't seen it just yet. I'll go into it and be like, that was okay. It's a decent the way I put it. It's a decent movie. It was actually better the second time I saw it. Okay. I actually enjoy that a lot more. Do you think I'll enjoy it more than uh, most Marvel movies, which I'm very blasé about these days? Oh, well, that's good. Absolutely. It is on... There is almost no Bathos. Right. Oh, well, that's a a fucking plus, at least. There is almost an excess of sincerity in this film. (laughs) And there is one, like, there spoiler for when I eventually do at least one podcast talking about this. But um, the thing that that I took away from me, they're like, so Shatter... She's got. She's a very movie design mm-hmm. in her face. There is a moment where she smiles. Oh, okay. And it looks like a villain smiling. Oh, neat. Good. And I remember back in 2006 when I was really active on the movie forums, Nelson, who was Michael Bay's PR guy, um, he shit. used to say, my no, God, Nelson, it's shit. incredible. You'll all freak out when you see Optimus Prime smiling on screen. You know what Optimus has never done in those movies? Mm-hmm. Smile once. Because no one does. Don't they? Because there is no joy Don't... in those films. Ooh, yeah. None of the robots emote. Do they? Like, facially oh. emote. No, no, get... that's, not, that's not true. Because uh, Lockdown looks angry quite a lot. He looks really but angry talking to people. Does his facial expression change? Or do they just make his eyes wider and the performance gets growlier? Mm, no, that's a good point. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, seriously, go through those movies. The, you'll you'll have performances change and you'll have the eyes move more mm-hmm. but you'll never see a smile you'll never see a frown you'll never see someone like the you'll see someone yell but what about squeaks when he said chihuahua go home Andy you're drunk <laughs> um, but so like I want to see I would love to see a, a Beast Wars movie with that kind of heart behind it but I also like if you did Beast Wars you kind of You'd either have to do it, like, ooh, in the past, and I feel like that requires too much explaining, or you'd have to basically do, like, and here's a separate continuity running alongside our other continuity. I imagine it, it would be quite difficult to sell a normie audience on Beast Wars. Like, I don't know how, like, selling an audience on robots coming from space and becoming vehicles, I think is hard. Hard enough, mm. and you have to give all the backstory and and exposition and all that kind of stuff. And you have to do that and make them turn into animals, like you see. You have to probably put them in the past, and if you're gonna do that, that's that's a whole other mess to try and worry about as well. Mm. So I I imagine that would be a fucking challenge, a difficult task. Uh, it'd be interesting to see them, you know, try and tackle it, but I I would not mm. envy them. It would also be one where, especially if they were going for the <coughs> live action vibe. <laughs> Where they wouldn't have a human protagonist. They would have to make it about the Transformers. Unless they did it, for some reason, did it in the present? No, no, they could go into the past and have the amazing uh, Nithan, uh, ni, ni, uh, the ancient human episodes oh from Beast Wars. Uh, remember oh how my the God. were with the nightmare, <laughs> the nightmare cave people. Oh, those two children that they saved. Oh, no, yeah. Oh no, they, they are terrible. They they are horrifying to look at in this day and age. <laughs> like things have aged badly for Beast Wars, but nothing aged quite as badly as those human characters, especially those two kids. They are nightmarish yeah. to look at. They remind me a lot more of um the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. Yeah, they they really do. And that is if you've seen the Donkey Kong cartoon, that is not a compliment. There is much singing there, yeah, I'd never noticed as a child when I watched it. I didn't watch it. It's French, you know. Oh, that explains a lot why it's so weird. <laughs> it's huh. a French animation company, I think, did it. Oh, wow. Well, wow, well, okay, yeah. Jesus. Donkey Kong Country Cartoon. Was it Donkey Kong Country Cartoon or was it just Donkey Kong Cartoon? I think it was just Donkey Kong. It's weird. It's a fucking weird show. Mm. I don't think I ever remember liking it. Look out down below. Yeah, I remember the tune. Yeah, I don't remember liking it. I I think 
I think it was on before things I wanted to watch, or it, I think it was probably on when I came home from school, and it was like, well, shit, I'm eight years old. What am I going to do now with my life? Something productive? Nope. <laughs> Donkey Kong, <laughs> woo! Look out, time to go. <laughs> I remember... I remember it was on before Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. How? On whatever station really? I was watching oh, it on. Oh, jeez, okay. I never saw that Which show. Which I did... L- being a nine-year-old trying to explain the fact that you're watching Cadillacs and Dinosaurs is really awkward. Not because of the dinosaurs and the cars and everything else, but because Hannah, the main character, is dressed quite evocative- evocatively. Really? Throughout. Oh, okay. Is that why oh, you watched it? Look it up. L- look it up sometime. Like, just look for her design. I'm just like... I-, I had to... Like, your mother walks in and watching that and just like, Listen, I'm too young to really get this, and I want to see dinosaurs. Why are you <laughs> being awkward about this? <laughs> Ooh, I bet you want to look at some mm, dinosaurs. I do remember my godmother's boyfriend wandered in once. He sat down in the bed and just started being really annoying. It's just like, hey, she's dressed a bit better than I was expecting. Oh, is he, is he like smoking a cigar, like licking his lips going, <laughs> Oh, she's got a sexy body there, doesn't she, Mike? She, look at the webs on her. Call down your godmother, she'd, get, she'd, she'd stop you watching this, I can tell you that much. She'd stop me watching this. <laughs> I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Your godmother gets happy when I watch this show because I take it home and see it. What do you see about her? <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll learn in time there, lad. You'll learn in time. <laughs> he did not hide his magazines very well. Oh, no, Mikey. <laughs> oh, no. They're uh, married now. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, right, shall I take Zona? Do, do you have more on Lorenzo that you want to de Bonaventura on? As I said several times, Lorenzo, buddy, just just sit down and have a cup of tea. Just just take your money, have some tea. Yeah. He's probably take us on, Andy. Yeah, we have some info on Transformers Cyberverse Region 4, which is um, New Zealand? Australia? Yeah, it's, it's further, uh, yeah, more that way. More east than us here, which is B. The price is in NZD, so I'm assuming it's at least New Zealand. I would imagine so. Uh, Region 4 DVD release coming soon. First off, it's a bit shit that it's DVD, because who the fuck... D- really? DVD? Put it on Blu-ray? Still Come on. Buy, like, lots of people still buy DVD, Andy. I don't know like, why. I, I Like, my Tesco video section is all DVDs. I much I don't know why people would buy a DVD though when they could have the better visual quality of a of a Blu-ray. Sometimes it doesn't matter when your TV isn't good enough. <laughs> it matters to me, <laughs> <laughs> especially like when I look at poor Benny Cisco in 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 poor SD quality. I'm like, give Benny the HD treatment. He's having a hard life. He is. <laughs> they won't do it though. They said something about. I what was it? It's the too cost expensive. To, yeah. To restore DS9 is just insane. Yeah. Because I is it the effect shots or? I think it was something to do with the effect shots. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a real bummer because it's like because oh, it passed the over best one? from Fuck. yeah oh god yeah but it passed over from having easily done models to a lot more CGI. That's right. Yeah. So. Mm. I think they should just fucking do it though. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it would sell. I'm sure it would, because it's like DS9. You could make a big mm. fucking deal about it as well, instead of pushing yeah. Discovery, which is bollocks. Oh, God, I was watching Discovery reviews today. Did, did you watch like... the prelude to Axanel that I sent you last night? No, didn't have time. <laughs> so I need <laughs> to watch that after this. You should. Prelude to Axanel is good. And for those not aware, uh, Prelude to Axanel was a fan film, uh, or fan production, that got sent to CBS, or, or CBS found out about it, and they were taken to court. And this was was done in like 2014. Now it's 2019. Everything's okay. Axanar finally managed to get through, and because of the legal nonsense, basically, CBS has been able to hit them down to only being able to do two 15-minute episodes. But it is coming, so I'm very excited for Axanar because actually, it looks and feels like a modern Star Trek show. But a but good, good news: like... CBS is being taken to court for plagiarism with Star Trek Discovery. Oh, really? Yep. Um, oh, the Tardigrade uh, story, because it was based off no, someone's no. story, right? Oh, no, not just the Tardigrade, Andy. The entire show. Really? Oh, no. Um, a guy, I think it's a game, um, is he's, he's launched oh. a, a lawsuit saying that basically Discovery, his game wasn't very well known. That's Discovery right. took everything from it, like the... 
like everything down to Michael. Yeah, it was it was a guy from Egypt, I think, wasn't he? I think, he? think so. And I, now, yeah, I don't I, know if this is true, but I think it's funny because I don't like that show. Yeah, the story the story's true because this is what's been reported on. Yeah, because yeah. apparently the guy looks after his parents as well. Mm. So it's like, oh, the reason I didn't know is because you know I'm I'm a hard worker. I did this game in my spare time because I look after my parents and have another job as well. It's like, oh, so CBS kind of fucked him, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> uh, but no, mm. back back on to Transformers. Uh, Cyberverse coming. Uh, DVD, it says it will have 66 minutes. So that's uh, apparently the first six episodes. That doesn't seem enough, but it's probably right. And also, uh, 66 yeah, minutes about, on a they're DVD? 11, they're, they're 11 minutes, so... This, this is the equivalent of a two-episode VHS. Or a yeah. one-episode VHS. But, and they have to do part one and part two of any series release. That's true. Actually, this will be I, part three. Will because, there be three um, or more? 18 episodes. It's 18, okay. And if they keep this up, it's three, it'll be six per. Uh, it Luckily, it's at a cheap price, I suppose. It's 10 NZD, which I'm guessing, as, as he thought, Mikey, is probably New Zealand dollars, mm. I guess. Uh, that's equivalent to uh, six dollars sixty nine, <laughs> mm. uh, which is approximately uh, that in in American dollars. Uh, it's due mm. out for release on the twentieth of February. Um, who knows if local US release is gonna happen anytime soon? But you know, it, it's coming. I'm not sure it's a series I'd l- love to own. Uh, I'm still really perturbed by the fact I can't get. I I did get the Prime. Uh, Beast Hunters DVD, uh, Blu-ray and Mikey didn't work. Oh, good. Didn't work. Boo. Yeah. So it kind of puts me off getting more. I need to, I, I like, if anybody knows a region-free DV- Blu-ray player, let me know. I think Amazon, or, I got a region-free DVD player. Ah, uh, no, Amazon Blu-ray, was. Blu-ray player. The DVD players, are e- you can well, find the them easily. Are, they don't do that, because Blu-ray restrictions are limited, aren't they? Yeah, that's the thing. Well, that's well, of course. So they never think to put them in. So yeah. it's never really become a thing. No, so no. So, some DVD companies have them in. Some don't. Oh, right. Like the DC. Apparently, DC DVDs or uh, Blu-rays don't have them. But oh, obviously, good. the Transformer ones for some reason do. Because Cartoon Network. I guess yeah. So super mm, inconsistent. It's made me back. consider buying a, a blue an American Blu-ray player, but that's a bit of a faff. Hmm. So, I don't know. I'd love to have a solution because I'd like to own Transformers Prime. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good show. We're owning. It's all, all like people, it. people could it. say, well, why don't you just get a subscription? And my argument to that would be because at, some, at any time it could be pulled. Yep. You know, and switched out. And, you know, look at Disney at the moment. They've just taken everything off Netflix. Uh, so, yeah. not a, like series are going to disappear from that. Then it's going to go up on, DC, then on Disney service. DC's doing the same thing with all their cartoons. Yep. And... Like, in America, I think the only way to watch it online now is stuff like the DC online stuff. Yeah. Like, for Justice League or something like that. I'm sorry, you don't get to put Justice League behind an exclusive wall. No. You, don't, you do not have the right, sir. No. Or madam. You do not have the right. <laughs> I don't care if you own the license. You do not have the... You do not have the moral right, certainly. I don't think so. No. Um, uh, so but th- I always prefer owning than streaming certainly yeah at, at least if it's mm. sh- if it's a show that i want to go back to if it's a, i've decided mm. in this day and age i don't need to own movies uh because mm. movies are a one-time watch for the most part unless i'm tickled but usually with a, a show a series i like to have something to watch in bed and like i'm buying spider-verse I'm, I'm buying spider-verse <laughs> see i uh, i did think about maybe buying spider-verse but then i thought how many how much would i watch it and i, I, I don't think it would be it. enough so. I, if I watch it once a year, it's worth buying. <laughs> oh, yeah, certainly. Certainly. Yeah. A really good fucking movie. Uh, any other thoughts on the Cyberverse stuff, though, Mikey? At least uh, DVD? Um, good. Uh, would prefer a different release thing. I think you could just do one, like, it's 18, 11 minutes episodes. You could just do it as one and not try and drag this out. Yeah, they're trying to but... spread the money and get as much as they can, mm. clearly. Um, but uh, did you finish the show yet, by the way? No, not yet. I haven't got around mm. to it. I plan to, but uh, I haven't yet. Uh, Eruption had its final US release, so it's up on their YouTube blocked, but um, the Daily Motion version should be out there for the last couple of weeks. Ah, cool. Yeah, I'll get around to watching that soon. Just saying, like, this show surprised me on several levels. It hasn't really wowed did. me, but it's been a lot better than the, well, the previous one, at least. Yeah, but there's a, I don't know, just surprising. Not, I went in there pretty negative, I have to admit. Oh, yeah, certainly. 
I think for good reason, because we were very, very down on R.I.D. I, I mm, think for so. good reason, I think. I think so. I think so. But, no, got to say, like, they've they've set a grounding. If they could change a few things and if you could get a better format, I think there's a there's there's stuff to work with here. Yeah. Granted, I'd mm. much prefer it wasn't 15 minute episodes. I think that oh, God, hurts yes. it. But, uh, oh, God, yes. Hey, ho. Uh, Mikey, do you want to mm. take us on to the next bit of news, son? Yeah, this is a, a weird bit of news. So Hasbro have put on uh, their Siege website uh, character profiles, which you unlock using keywords. And these tell you little facts and figures about the characters, and most importantly include transformation videos of the characters, which they put behind passwords that you have to figure out. Yay. Um, <laughs> but one they have up there is for the upcoming green light figure. And hers is a little unusual. She comes with her the, the same stuff. She comes with her video and her, her character page. But she also comes with a schematic for a combiner called Orthia. Um, which is the Power of the Primes uh, Alita 1, Moonracer, and Nova Star uh, with green light and classified. Um, which is hinting, it seems, that there is going to be a Fort Limb, a Fort Girl Limb released, which some people are very happy about. Some people are moaning that it's all going to be one mold. Um, the password to get in is Lancer, by the way, and of course Lancer is one of the remaining Autobot, uh, female Autobots, so hmm. probably no prize money for guessing who it's going to be. No, no. Um, but I think it's neat. I think it's good that, uh, you know, we're completing a combiner. Uh, because it was really weird having just two girl, three girls, and a couple of random feet, yeah, or arms or whatever you wanted it to be. I'm trying to having a completely symmetrical combiner as well is going to be a bit different. A little bit sad. Mm. At least they're gonna have it done, but it's it's you know it is as simple of a job as they could do. I I guess in a lot of ways because it's just like hey, just redo the basic mold a little bit here and there, but it's it's all the same. For the most part, mm. I, I think that is a shame, but it'll, it's something to keep an eye on. And Orthia, sure. uh, another female combiner, I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it does mean like Elite In Infinite's going to be like poor old Betatron? How so? Because uh, for anyone who doesn't remember, Betatron was there was a, a a single release of Scattershot before we got the Computron oh. box set, and it was just <laughs> like we don't have any limbs to go with him. Oh, this is the Betatron. He's a beta test one. He uses the limbs from other combiners. That's right. Yay. And Alita Infinite, it's the, you know, oh, it's Alita, her, her combined form is Alita Infinite. It's going to, the thing with the thing. Did, did Starscream ever have a complete um, th uh, thing nope. to and go does, with? No name, no limbs. Oh, okay. So it was so, just a gimmick. Yeah, which is a bit, sh bit of a shame kind of wish we had a it would be a bit annoying in a way but a four seeker set would be very nice to add on sure like um and like if they're doing accessories and stuff these days with a cape that you can stick on his back mm -hmm. mm. but um i'll do this one as well since it's very quick um g1 sound rave sound wave <laughs> reissue revealed um via in demand toy facebook uh, they've shown that a reissue of Soundwave is on the way in classic G1 packaging with a buzzsaw. Um, they've noted that it's the reissue using the original mold rather than G1 Sound Blaster. Huh. Which is interesting because didn't they have to remake that mold? I'm not sure. Because I, I think I, they I did hope, at some point. I hope that's not the case because I'd, I'd, I'd strongly say if you can remake Soundwave and feel okay about it, you can do that with Let the Dinobots. Go, never! They're never! never! They're never going to do it. We've, we've got decent quality knockoffs. which Well, we had decent quality knockoffs. Yeah, um, they're expensive now. But, yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, no information apart from that. We just know he's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy. Uh, take us on to some convention news. Yes, uh, would you be surprised, Mikey, if I was to tell you that TFCon had some more guests? Yes, because I was assuming it was just going to be Izzo standing there in the corner saying, like, look at me! Well, no, there Plus are some, playing as there are even more characters. even more guests coming. We've got Bill Ratner, <gasps> the voice of Flint from G.I. Joe, uh, and who oh was God. also in the G.I. Joe episode uh, for Transformers The Killing Jar, if you remember that one. Or was it the G.I. Joe episode, The Killing Char? Anyway. I think that's G1 episode. Oh, G1. Oh, yeah. G1 yeah. episode, The Killing Jar. Um, yeah. Killing Jar. I can't remember, I that, remember one. that one. No. No. I remember his I daughter was in. Dad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, Flint. So. Flint from G.I. Joe. Big name. 
That's cool. Mm. Uh, they've also got Marcelo Matier, who oh, is wow. a artist man who does lots and lots of art. And who well, is that's good. TF Khan. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, Flint was TF Nation. I don't think he was. I think, was he TF Khan or TF Nation? He's TF Khan. There's... Okay, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. I don't usually, but I'll trust you. You can have a look at the story. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, and the last guest uh, is not for TF Con. It is for TF Nation, and that's Mr. Obviously. Greg Berger. Yay! I was going to make a joke there, but yay, Greg's back. Woo! Yeah, it's been a. It's actually been a good few years since Greg's been to uh, Auto Assembly TF Nation. I can't remember Daddy's if he was. come home. Was he at? <laughs> T- uh, was he at I TF Nation don't. or was he at a auto assembly last? I don't think he's ever been at a TF Nation. I didn't think so either. I think, yeah, yeah, because the last thing he did was that, I think it was that Skype call, wasn't it? That went horribly, horribly wrong. I don't remember. Um, During one of the, the dinner meetings, and I think that was AA. Oh, that yeah, that sounds like mm. a... Because I remember yeah. Simon trying to desperately push buttons and fix the reception. <laughs> but um, but for anyone who doesn't know, Greg Berger uh, kind of ran away with every auto assembly he's ever been at. Mm-hmm. Turned out he's super super cool. Yeah. So you know he'll be really good to have him there. Um, and Peter Spellos at the same time. That's pretty good. At yes. TF yeah. Nation. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a it's a pretty decent lineup uh, for the uh, you know for the start. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure more guests will be announced. You know, it's still very early days for TF Nation because it's uh, not till August. So, long time. Mm. Will Mikey be going this year? Hopefully. Yay! Uh, I've been saying hopefully for a while, but we'll see. For the... <laughs> we need Mikey. Sure, it's not only getting over there now. It's like if I'm not working in England, it's just like getting a visa or whatever it's going to be. Oh, yeah, that's uh, true. You will give us four pints of blood. Why are you German working at the English flight services? Shut up! <laughs> Everyone is German here now. That's it how it was goes. all part of the plan. My God, my <laughs> God! Uh, no, right. no, mein Gott. Oh, 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 very good, very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like German people as a rule. Good. Uh, well, <laughs> Mister Mikey, what have you been up to since we last heard from you? You done some fun stuff. Got some I've fun things. I've done a little bit, but I do want to throw in one small bit of extra news. Oh yes, I um, forgot you had a had a secret special hmm. bit of news. Because I just wanted to clear a few things up. So during the last couple of weeks, a new story came out that Hasbro had won a legal battle against counterfeit Transformers products in China. Um, and the Hasbro representative, which was Taryn Sibley, said, We take protection of our intellectual property very seriously and will continue to investigate and pursue those who infringe on our rights. And this led to uh, an avalanche of people panicking because every news story that had this was accompanied by a picture of a third party product. Hmm. Um, now, we can't say for sure what this was about, but we can say this is not them having applied to a Chinese court saying, we want you to make it, you know, legal that we can go after anyone who's using our imagery or whatever. This was them, um, in 2017, they had an administrative raid raid action, um, one of several that was going on for several different toy companies, where it sounds like they went af- after full-on counterfeit products, like those 15 billion side swipes on eBay. Oh, or yes. those Dinobots that you used to be able to get and everything else mm-hmm. um, that were basically, hey, we're trying to convince you this is a real toy. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think this was ha- this sounds like Hasbro managed to find one of the factories that was doing it and went after them for legal purposes. Um, Does it there say three how de- they found them or them? No, no. Just says that uh, after thorough investigation, three separate defendants, including two individuals and one corporate defendant, were found guilty, fined in court, and two were sent for jail time. Thousands of counterfeit products were confiscated. Now, if thousands of Transformers third-party figures had been confiscated, I think we would have heard about it. Yes. So, I want to tell everyone to calm down. I think the, this might affect stuff like Wei Zhang. <laughs> I don't think it's going to affect the third-party market, because I think, in many ways, Hasbro knows they, they kind of benefit from it in several ways. Mm. I'm not saying the third-party is never going to get come down on legally. It's just... I'd be more worried about those third-party optimists that are on the way because they will directly compete with a upcoming Hasbro product, mm. or Takara product, rather. Um, so I could see them being a bit... Like, kind of like that shockwave. Or, uh, no, oh, it was yeah. a sound wave. Yeah, it was a sound wave. Yeah, that was that was stopped in its who tracks. Was, who was pulled because Mouthpiece sound wave was coming out. Or, yeah. I know, was it Kapow was told they couldn't sell the sexy RC? I can't remember. The fans toys one? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, but yeah, but I, like the sky is not falling, guys. 
you're fine. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, what would I get up to? I, I've been very busy uh, with family and nonsense over the last couple of weeks. Happy New Year, everyone, by the way. Um, so I didn't really do much of note. I only got clothes for Christmas, so no one gave me anything fun. Um, did sell some stuff on eBay and do have a couple of things coming, one of which Ooh. I am very excited about. I finally got to order one of the 4i model kits. Oh, yeah, which one? Uh, uh Nemesis. Uh, which is the repaint of their highly stylized Optimus Prime, which, so, like, the ones I wanted to get were the Nemesis and the two IDW figures. Those mm-hmm. were the ones I had my eye on. Aren't they um, the only ones that are out at the moment? Uh, well, the only ones we knew at the time, anyway. Yeah. Um, wait and see what happens with Windblade and the rest, but, uh, so he'll be here at some point in the next month, um... But I want to get, like, I want to try and have a proper go at this. So I want to try and get at least some Gundam markers or something. Try and bring out a bit of the detail on him. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, got some books on sciencey stuff, like The Evolution of Dogs, which was a weird book because the guy had basically decided what he thinks it is, and then he kind of ignores any other ideas. But then he spends half of talking about genomes and genetics, and I'm just like, I just want to hear about dogs. <laughs> I don't care about your haploids and your diploids. I just don't care. You're you're still talking, and it opens up with I don't actually particularly like dogs, but yeah. it's like why did you write a book on them? Then <laughs> why? <laughs> um, the other thing I got was a book on de extinction, bringing back extinct species, because it's something I find interesting. Um, didn't get anything particularly interesting present wise apart from that. Uh, I didn't watch a lot as well. I most of what I was doing was either watching stuff with the family or watching stuff while babysitting. So I ended up rewatch. I didn't want to like try anything new in those scenarios because I can tell you now, trying to watch a television program and mind a child at the same time is really difficult. When you have to get up every ten minutes to tell her to stop crying and that no, you're not going to give her a toy back. She needs to learn to stand on her own two feet. <laughs> um, but so I didn't want to, you know, try and invest in a new show. So I ended up watching uh, the Persona Four dub, or at least half of it, mm. and the first ten episodes of the Yushu and Tora dub. Okay. Uh, the Yushin Tora dub, Ed, Tora's voice is excellent. Absolutely perfect. On mark. The guy could not have done better. Ushio's voice is all wrong. And several of the other voice actors are not up there, in my opinion. There are good performances in there, apart from Tora. But um, it, it this has this very 90s quality to the dubbing. Oh, it came out which, uh, earlier than, oh, later than that, though, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Ushin Tora was, <laughs> what, 2015? Yeah. But it's like someone said, it's a very 90s show. We could do everything in a 90s style. You know, you could you could up your game. That'd be good. We all remember the you know late nineties dubs were not always the best. Some were good. No, no, not all. Um, Persona Four's dub surprisingly good. I suppose like because all the guys doing it, apart from Johnny on Bosch, were all doing the games and everything else. But um, like re- good quality, good quality dub. And like, oh my god, I forgot how good that show was. It's so good. Che is amazing. <laughs> she and, and, and her meat obsession. She fucking loves um, meat, yo. She does. She does. Um, Don't break a DVD of uh, something of yeah. the dragon. Yes. Oh God, Legends of the Dragon. Legend. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Legends of the Dragon. Also, terrible father. <laughs> Poor Jim. Terrible father. Poor Dojima. <laughs> I know why, but terrible father. Yeah. Nanako. Uh, Poor Nanako. sweet Nanako. Jesus, just no. You don't know. You take that girl to the park. That poor you girl needs to, to be happy. <laughs> you take her to Junez. Every she deserves to go to Junez. Junez. Um, yeah. Uh, but, like, most of the shows I was watching are over. Mm. And I haven't gone back to any shows I stopped or started any new ones because, as I said, um, I did watch Catch Up on Ruby again. Uh, yesterday I managed that. Uh, this season is a combination of very funny and very depressing. <laughs> the last episode was really funny up until the bit at the end. We're just like, oh, oh, we're doing this now. Oh, this isn't happy at all. Hey, we're also talking about alcoholism. Hey, oh, this show is so good. I never thought I'd get in- this into it. Never, never, never. Um, really want to get the Blu-ray for it, but it's hard to find at a decent price. Uh, their their new series Genlock, the Mecha one, is coming out at the end of the month as well. I'm keeping an eye out for that. Um, TV wise, that was kind of it. The only other thing of note is I read a few comics. 
Um, I, Gold Digger is a series I've been meaning to get into for years, literal years. And I just never have. And apparently it's now like the longest running or the second longest running independent comic book of all time. Oh, damn. Okay. Because it's been going since the mid-90s continuously. Um, but I, I, all I know is like one of the main characters is a cat or a cheetah or something like that. I, but I, I, I know people were reading it and it's gotten good reviews over the years. And But they did a Transformers parody issue. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And apparently there's lots of things like one of the characters, her car is G1 Hot Rod. Stuff like that. Um, so I read this, and then I was just like, huh, um, a tad lewd? Um, Monster Musume bio- lewd. It's, it's, it's like, there's an orgasm scene with Megu-chan. Okay. Who is a, a take on Megatron, you know, <laughs> who is Megu-chan, and there are the, the words, he's got a large plug. Oh dear. But there's also like sc- the, some of the bad guys are Scream Star and Warp Sky. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and Prime with a Y, not an I. Um, but there's also brain swapping and a weird bit where naked people with transformer minds are trying to transform, and it just they appear to be mooning people. Okay. Um, and and then I I just looked into the artist. He also draws porn. Hey. Including Transformers porn. Hey. Hey, but he makes good money off it by the looks of things. Um. But yeah, I'm like everyone's saying. Do you like, really want to use the term "good money"? Do you not want to say "shame money"? No, there is no shame money. Money, <laughs> money. <laughs> but um, I'm tempted to throw it into one of the comic shows. Okay. Since we don't have much to talk about until March. Um, <laughs> it could be an interesting one because I want to see your reaction to some of this. No. But <laughs> but um, no, it was actually the writing itself was fun. I laughed a lot. Like there was a good sense of humor to it. I just, I like I said, like. Hey, robot orgasm. Um, rogasm, if you will. Oh. Now, the other thing I read uh, was Soul of the Dragon, a Power Rangers comic from Boom Studios, which is a standalone, basically Old Man Tommy. Um, it's set in the TV universe, uh, I think it's like 10 years after Dino Thunder or something like that, um, in the SPD era. And Tommy is being sacked from his job. His son is in the SPD. His wife, Kat, she is off another planet because now aliens are living among us. And his son goes missing and he, having reluctantly picks up the magic morpher they gave him recently, which basically means he can access all his old powers. Because I saw clips of that um, for an anniversary episode. And he, it was damaged years ago and he's now going to try and track down his son and use his powers. And it's written by Kyle Higgins, who did the amazing run of um, Power Rangers that ended on Shattered Grid. Um, which basically translates into, hey, Andy, this is a really good comic. Oh, good. Um, th- apparently, there's at least a push, including from Jason David Frank, of just like, we, w- I want to see this as a show on Netflix for adults. Oh, Jason, hang on. Dave- Jason David Frank says pushing for a job. Who knew? Jason. <laughs> No, no, he's pushing for a Power Rangers thing again. He needs to... He, he really wants to... Like, he did this like he wanted Dracon to have a show as well. <laughs> I was just like, no, I want to... I want to I wanna kill people. I want to kill people. I can do it in real life, but I want to be paid to do it. <laughs> I have a feeling it makes him some pretty good bank doing uh, Power I, Rangers I stuff. I suspect so. I suspect so. He's, apparently, he's co-owner of paramorphicon express like a traveling version of paramorphicon or something like that i saw today oh all right which is very surprising but yeah it's a really good comic the art's decent not an amazing mm. but it's really really good uh, as a story finster is in there which was a big surprise lots of like interesting things like um they reference the whole magic zordon good wave from space where rita and zed turn good and oh, go yes. off for a dance remember yep. that i do it was weird um yeah <laughs> but no it's good and it's like kind of Tommy's older now but he he doesn't really you know the world's not he saved the world but the world didn't get better is how he puts it yeah, yeah. and he, he he's dealing with that a lot and I really liked it I really I thought it was a really good bit of bit of a read um well worth your time it's a single book as well it's a single trade paperback so I would say if for anyone who doesn't know the Transformers uh the Power Rangers comics were are really freaking good I'm a little behind on the new stuff, but the the first run was really freaking good. Mm. Finster was terrifying. Um, so the same writer doing a a, a sort of in depth 
that old soldier coming back to the war kind of thing was just a joy. So uh, check him out. Check it out. And that's me. Andy, what about you? Uh, well, uh, I've got a few things uh, post-Christmas because uh, I only got money. Uh, during the the holiday, so uh, you can be boss, uh, is what you're to, saying. Uh, it, well, it wasn't by choice. I would have liked some some little <laughs> schnaffles under the tree, um, mm. but I talked about it last time, didn't I? That I was gifted uh, Sonic Mania. I think yes, yes. You okay, hadn't played it yet? I think that's right. Um, and I got some other games as well during the sale. I picked up uh, Dark Siders Two. Uh, which I remember playing back in the day. It's it's still fun to play now. Uh, I'm at the horrible stage of trying to track down all of the collectibles, mm. and I'm using a guide, and I'm missing one. And it's it, I'm I'm looking at the guide and going, okay, I'm sure I've got these all, but I clearly don't. So I'm gonna have to go through all forty of them and just go through every single location to get this goddamn one thing that I need. It's a pain mm. in the ass. Um, but I've been doing that. Uh, what else? I got Subnautica. So I've been swimming in the ocean, building my, my underwater base and having fun with the, the fishies and whatnot. Swimming That's been quite a good thing. That's right. Uh, I've never played that many survival games, so it is a little bit annoying having to go and get fresh food and water and stuff like that. Uh, but luckily, because I've got a base set up now, I've got a little, little habitat to breed fruit and uh, a, a, a plant that has a lot of water in it. So I'm pretty sustainable mm. now at this point, which helps a lot. Uh, fun little game actually has a story which most of those games don't have it seems so that's that's mm. definitely a plus um i have watched some animus as of recent um i finished thunderbolt fantasy season two as of last night mm. i i did i got really bored of it it does get like that yeah um it's I not thought the ending great was, writing. the ending was weak yeah, um, I felt the thought. entire show was pretty weak. It, though, I think, I think the problem it, with I think Thund- it held up with its visuals, but oh well, yeah, yeah, the visuals are fine. It's just again, it failed story wise. I think it has this awful problem of uh, exposition dumping, mm. and there's a lot of that. I don't feel I know the world. It's really bad at world building. Um, Which it, the first season wasn't. I thought. I thought it did. Like I, I thought it created an interesting little world. Yeah, but it didn't really expand on that. I didn't feel I knew the world much when I went back into it. Uh, mm. The cast, like the the story, was pretty simplistic, and it felt that it was cut down dramatically. The amount of new puppets that were introduced, mm. uh, even just the puppet count, was pretty low uh, in terms of designs. Because in the last show, you had a load of hero. Um, uniquely designed individuals. Yeah. And it feels that like there's a lot less of that in this series. Mm. Um, so I, 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 it was a struggle to get through. I felt they used a lot, because in the first series when they needed to do crowd scenes, they ended up using a lot of um, dolls from the original uh, Taiwanese show. Right, okay. Which is why they had, you'd sometimes see guys in there to have very diff- different facial features. Right. Um, I noticed a lot more of that here. I think I think uh, several of those monk characters were the same. I think they reused a lot of a lot more of the older dolls, which meant you've only got four or five new ones. It kind of felt like it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, wasn't a big fan uh, of it to be honest. I don't know if Orobachi actually wrote this one. That's the thing I'm trying to find out. Mm. Uh, well, here's the thing: I wasn't too fussed on the story from the first season. You you thought it was okay. I I was mm. pretty blasé about it, and I felt this was a step down. Visually, it was still very good. Mm. I still and, loved and, it visually. I had a bit of an issue with it ending on a cliffhanger, and then just suddenly go. By the way, remember these guys? <laughs> I was, as soon as I heard the woman's voice, I was like, I know who that is, and it's like, yeah, it's her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I did that. I also watched and finished Goblin Slayer. Uh, I liked uh, it. Yeah, is it at the most heinous anime as I've been told it is? No, it's a little bit. I would certainly say the uh, the the rape stuff is distasteful, mm. uh, but it if you are of that kind of disposition where that is a make or break for you, then it it is certainly going to break it. You could mm. easily say it is a cheap element to make you dislike the goblins, and it is a cheap element, but it certainly makes you dislike the goblins. <laughs> It's effective, if not cheap. Mm. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it has some problems where every now and again they'll replace the Goblin Slayer with a CG model of him walking and doing really pointless things. 
So even though they, they have the CG model of him in, it's not for any of the action scenes. Mm. So it, it is a bit distracting when he's he he's suddenly this really kind of clunky CGI model walking along with a, a normal 2D character. But yeah, um, it's conne- it, people have had connections with it to uh, D&D and dice rolling, and that's mm. really loose. Uh, it's not as strong as I thought they'd probably play it up to be. Uh, it's not an amazing show. It's not a terrible show. Uh, I thought it was, it was perfectly fine. It was serviceable. Uh, it has some mm. interesting elements in there. I like the fantasy world. Um, and some people might not like the disposition of the Goblin Slayer being, I just want to... No, I don't... You, you want to talk to me about something that's not goblins? I don't give a shit. I don't care. Mm. We need you to come and help us kill the Demon Lord, because if you don't, he'll destroy the entire planet. I don't give a shit. It's not goblins. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, people made the... Suggestion: He's very much like Doom Guy, and he kind of is in that effect. He's not nearly as powerful as Doom Guy. No one is. No, no. Doom Guy is ridiculously strong, uh, but he is that same disposition of unless it's killing this one specific type of thing, then I don't care. Mm. Um, so I, I, en- I enjoyed it well enough. Uh, the character's quite nice, uh, though it's not like I say. Don't go in if you are easily disturbed by stuff. It's, it's not gonna endear you very quickly um mm. i i enjoyed it i don't think it's mm. nearly as i think some people have let the the first episode color the the, the opinions on the rest of the show and put them off and give it a, ne- a very a very negative disposition and you know that's their choice that's fair enough but i thought mm. it, was, it was serviceable at the least speaking of um disturbing shows certain one has a confirmed season two on the way which one in, in the next season or two one which uh, there it is made somewhere, possibly in an abyss. Oh, made in an abyss. Oh, good. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah. So thought you. I saw that during the week and thought you'd be interested. Yeah, definitely. Well, sorry, when did you say it's coming? Uh, sometime in 2019. I can't 2019. tell you exactly when. That, I that's don't fine. Have it here. <laughs> I would. I would imagine if you say that, it's probably going to be uh second half of the year. If if they've mm. just kind of mentioned it, it's probably second half. But that's good. I I look forward to seeing that show because I was a a nice unpleasant show uh, to watch that was very beautiful as well at the same time i i know people who have seen the show and when you said nice and unpleasant i could literally outside my window hear the screaming <laughs> well, it was an unple- it was a nice uh, not unpleasant show which is uh, it's fine it's fine it's fine it, it it is quite unpleasant but i i it, it was well done and like oh, say, it's visually beautiful the animation yeah. stunning yeah it's great I, but it, it is definitely one where you have to be able to accept things non-sexual child abuse yep violent extreme non-sexual child abuse of horrific bodily injuries yeah i i think that's very much a show actually like that is very much a show and i went blind as well fairly blind anyway where um i think being warned of that is not a bad thing because you have to be listen there is a level of violence towards the end where children undergo quite a lot of pain yeah you and they're not shy about it and if you can't to handle that, and there is, there is. I, I ain't saying like, like if you can't handle that, blah blah. But if 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 that is something that you find very repellent, no matter what you think of the story, do not watch this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if it's something where you're just like, it's part of a horror genre, and I've seen children suffer in horror before, which you do, and you 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 feel more comfortable watching it from that point of view, go ahead. But it is what it is. Yeah. It's not apologetic as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very unapologetic. Hmm. Um, I also am currently, because I'm watching anime at the moment, I'm watching Zombieland Saga. And I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of people talk about this show. A lot of people have stated this show is the show that makes them want to watch idol shows. See, so yeah, there's one idol show I want to watch, but it's got a mecha in it, so I don't think that's a fair <laughs> judgment. What, what's yours called? Uh, idol Master or something something. Oh, I've heard of Idol like, Master. That's a big series. The- Apparently there's like this whole idol master like everyone's dancing and then suddenly they just went and also for this season we're doing robots. What? Oh, okay. Are they robot <laughs> girls or are they just in robots? No, suits? girls in mechas. Mm. Girls in mechas. All right. That's weird. I know mm. I say so I've heard idol master is like it is the common rider of idol shows like it just keeps mm. going. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people have said Zombieland uh, Saga is the the show that makes them want to get into it and I don't see it. Uh, I'm watching it and like, yeah, this this is okay. A bunch of girls who are who are dead, who've been brought back as zombies, and now are uh, made into an, an idol group. And it's certainly a satire of how it it probably is to be Tret 
as an idol in the in the idol world, you know, you're, you're not mm. kind of tra- as a human being in a lot of ways, and it's got a lot of comedy. The most egregious thing about it, though, I find is for the dance numbers and for the singing parts, they have mm. the same clunky animation, CG animation shoved in that Goblin Slayer had for the non-important scenes. Right. So the, the, I, I don't know. I'm guessing to save money, so it's easier to do the choreography and stuff, because you don't need to draw it then. You just need to CG model it, do the animation, and then kind of flip it. I'd guess. Yeah, because like with the Goblin Slayer stuff, like I say, it's superfluous stuff like he's walking about. It's not the action stuff. The The point of the idol show is the singing and the fucking dancing and the girls getting along together. I would say the singing and the, the dancing is their equivalent of the action scene, right? Yeah. So why would you do the most important stuff in that really clunky kind of... It's not it's not Berserk levels bad, but it's it's... Mm. It's above that, but not a massive leap above that. Um, so it's it's okay, but I'm not really grasped by it at the moment that hard. It's, it's very hmm. much a, yeah, yeah, okay. Do you think it's one of those shows where just the premise drew people in? The premise, the show itself? yeah, the premise is certainly a draw. It's what drew me in, because I, I, I hmm. like the whole thing of them being monster girls. So I was like, ah, oh, monster moves to me. It's not that show, but I wish. <laughs> So close, so far. That's, I swear there was an idle story in that somewhere. Oh, I, it'd be weird if there wasn't. To be fair, yeah. Um, it's 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 not bad, uh, and it's maybe an okay introduction to idol shows. I I don't know, but I'm not I'm not amazed by it at all. Not as much mm. as a lot of other people seem to be online. So yeah, it's got a good intro sequence. The intro uh, is really nice and interesting visually and musically. It's that that's a good intro, but the show is just kind of eh for me. Uh, and I did mm. get stuff. I got some Blu-rays from uh, from the sales. Uh, so I got Kill the Kill, the Collector's Edition Part Two and Three, because Part One wasn't available. So mm. I'm I'm waiting for Part One to become available so I can get it. Maybe not the collector's version, but you know I need a Part One Blu-ray at some point. Mm. Um, I also got Full Metal Panic, which I haven't seen any of. Because uh, that was only five pounds for season one. I was like, yeah, Ooh, nice. Uh, yeah, why not? It's worth a gamble for five pounds. You know, um, what else was on there? Oh, I got Fate's Day Night, the first one, the Dean, Fate's Day's Dean series. That's the very, very first one by Studio Dean. Uh, mm. I, and because that was cheap as well. And I also got part two of Unlimited Blade Wars Collector's Edition because that was on sale. Uh, yeah. The standard versions uh, were, uh, were on sale as well, but they were like 30 quid each. Uh, and part two Collector's Edition was 18 pounds. So, I went, well, I guess I'll get the cheaper version, mm. even if it is a collector's edition. The col- yo collector's editions are fucking bobbins, Mikey. I was going to say, what is the collector's editions? Comes in, in uh, it comes uh, uh, for Kill the Kill. Uh, it comes in a slightly bigger box that comes with an art book. Uh, so it's mm. got it's That's it's not it's not got any descriptions in of it. It's just got like uh, for part three, the art book is just landscapes. Uh, background kind of landscapes and really? whatnot. Yeah, uh, that's part okay. two and uh, three and four because I'm I'm guessing this was split how it was split in the Japanese collector's version. Mm. And in part two, they've got just uh, rough sketches of animations, if you know what I mean. So it'd be like yeah. a, a clip, and it shows you a couple of the rough sketches. So it's not mm. very interesting. Yeah, uh, but again. At the time, they hadn't got the standard versions on sale, so I was like, okay, I'll just get the collector's one on sale. The th- part mm. three as well comes with a collector box to put them all into. So well, that's something. Yeah, it's, it's nice enough. Um, the the stuff for uh, Fate's Day Unlimited Blade Works, it mm. comes with four postcards, which are just the bits of artwork that are on the front of the box anyway, just each character but with a white background. So I was like, oh, well, that's yeah. pretty boring. It's got a poster of one of the sides of the box, and I'm like, okay, uh, it's not a big poster; it's a smallish poster. I was like, well, that's kind of boring as well. Mm. Uh, did it come with anything? Oh, okay, the only thing of value it comes with is it comes with a book that has uh, an interview with the, um, it's with some of the creators behind it. So that's really the oh, only me. thing of of real value in the collector's box. The rest of it is just kind of dribble, if you ask me. Uh, it's certainly mm. not worth the eighty pounds that it was going for. <laughs> yeah, and it went down to eighteen. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's weird. Uh, and mm. I also got because I ordered them either post Christmas or just after Christmas. I got uh, Gridman, 
and uh, God Zenon, so they can Ooh. combine together to become Sunder Gridoman from the original series. Uh, they're Not very bad. good. They're very good. <laughs> I am very, very happy with uh, the Gridman ones, especially compared to uh, Gal Feigar, who is incredibly disappointing as a combiner, and Gal Geiger, hmm. who's a little bit disappointing as a combiner. Uh, uh, Sunder, Thunder Gridman is really good and really solid uh, to connect. Uh, and he's a really good figure on his own. He comes with multiple hands, so he's got fists that can hold things. He's got choppy hands, and he's also got the the Agito screaming hands that you know from Chris's videos. <laughs> um, he comes with all the bits that you would expect that Gridman to come with. So he comes with the derpy sword. Uh, he comes mm. with the shield. You can combine the sword and the shield to make the really derpy sword. Uh, it's it's really good. It's really good. I want to get the. Uh, Gridman Sigma and the the dragon, mm. whatever the dragon's called, the uh, T Rex thing. I don't know it's a dragon. It's a it? dragon in the way Japanese ninety dragon. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> whatever that's called, I'd like to get that at some point because I, I was well impressed with this. We also learned over Christmas that they're doing the S S S S S Gridman as a Ooh. super mini plug kit as well, which means they'll probably do Grid Knight as well. Probably it would be weird if they didn't. I I did stuff the head swap. Uh is he does he not have a slightly different body proportion? Don't think so. Mm, I'm not offhand. You might be right. Mm. Uh, I did send uh, the mini pla uh, candy toy people on Twitter a a message uh, granted in English. So good luck to them translating that nonsense I sent them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, su- suggesting that if they did uh, Alex Alexis. And the bad guy from Gridman as a two-pack. That would be really mm. fucking cool. That would be awesome. That would be super cool. Uh, they could even do it as a web exclusive because they're bad guys. But, you know, I think that would be fucking sick. Um, and the the last thing I got, looking around, uh, was I got the Mike Sounders, Zasatins, and Volfog uh, for the Gal Gal Gal. Very nice. Yeah, Mike comes with the Barine Barine as well. Uh, the, oh, cool. The good thing about the Barine Barine is it can hold a fuck ton of accessories in the back of it as well. <laughs> it comes with three CDs as well, uh, mm. which is really cool. There's even, you know the in the anime how the, the discs shot up from the stage? Yeah. There's a, a little slot put in so you can put a CD in and a little device you can use to raise the disc up, which is really fucking That's what you don't neat. get with MP3s. No, <laughs> you don't get fancy CDs and whatnot. Um, mm. the, the worst thing about the Mike Sounders is they give you multiple eyes, but they don't give you... They give you two faces uh, uh, to put the eyes on. One face is for him in his uh, mic mode, and the other face is for specifically him in Mike Sounders mode because mm. it's a different shape. It's not as big. Otherwise, yeah. he'd have a big rump. You know, he'd be packing in that booty juice. Yep. Um but it, there's there's multiple stickers. There's normal eyes. There's the upside down use for happy eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the weird Gundam face, if you remember that. That was a one-off. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, they also have the musical note change faces for the transformation. And, they only give you, and there's only really one face you can use it with. Yeah, t- kind of two. Or one faceplate, I should say. There's kind of two faceplates you can use, mm. but that's it. That's not nearly enough for the amount of faces they give you, which is a real fucking bummer, if you ask no, me. No, not not unusual for them to do that, but no, never th- fun. No, that's, that's always just something that happens with model kits, which mm. is, you know, it's one of those things. And, and Volfog is neat as well. He's got a load of posability. Uh, he comes with a silver cross as well. Um with Mike, Mike doesn't need any bits removed from him apart from the faceplate to do the transformation, which is neat. And you take off his... Mm. No, you don't even take off his fists. The The fists stay on. So that's really good. He's self-contained for the most part. Uh, yeah. Volfog's a bit more uh, partsy because, you know, they've gone for the anime accurate. Uh, mm. So he has to... They've removed the entire front of the car and that's a, an entirely separate piece. Uh, and the spoiler as well. But Volfog's really good as well. Gonna have to get the big Vol- uh, Volfog sec- set at some point in the future as well. Because, you know, I like me some big Volfog. And then I can have little Volfog and big Volfog. <laughs> and Gunglu and maybe. Gundoba? Is that who it was? Gundoba and Gunglu. Yeah, Gunglu, yeah. Which was because like, it was like it was eagle, but with gun pronounced by Japanese people. So it became, instead of Gungle, it was Gunglu. Oh, okay. Yeah, didn't know that. Mm. Uh, and I think I sent you the image as well, the teaser image for for Galgaga. Uh, yep. Genesis gonna be coming uh, soon. 
Yeah. Yep. 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 yep which yep, which yep, does yep. have me worried about one thing, Mikey. The mining. No ten Ryujin. Oh, do her. We ha- we have not been tased on a ten Ryujin yet, which is a fucking shame. I hope We've it happens. We've never had an official ten Ryujin figure, and we should. It's a cool design. Agreed. I think it would be great if Mini Plow were the first people to do it. That'd be great. Yep. Um. So I think that's it. I think that's all the stuff I've got. To, uh, well, I went to a wedding party yesterday, so that was something. Mm. Yeah, that was that was fun enough. Anyone right now? No, I only I only knew the groom, his brother, uh, his mum, and his dad. So <laughs> I didn't you even know what, the you bride. Just naturally went around like slapping the ass of everyone else there. No, I I went to the food part and grabbed some food and sat down and started eating. Mm. Just noshed on these delicious food. It was really high end quality food. I was like, oh, you've you've put on a good feast for me today, sir. Well done, <laughs> well done. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's probably as done. We do have a message that came in today, a few hours before Ooh. we started recording, by Mister Tento Man uh, Number Four. Yes, he goes, Happy New Year. Pod question. Oh, it is a question. Are there any toy photo comics? Uh, that's a, with a lot of dashes in there. Uh, that mm. you dudes enjoy. Uh, if you're wondering, my faves are Beast Machines fan sequel, Obsidian's Lament. Mm. That started mm. as the Transformers Mosaic. Remember those? God, how long ago were those? <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. Here. How long ago were oh. those? 2008, 2009. Oh, Jesus. Was... Like nearly. So, what, 10 years? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I don't, think... <laughs> I don't think they went past the All Hail Megatron era. I'm not oh, really? sure Oh, you but... might be right. Yeah. Ooh, oh, mm. no. Oh, dear. Yeah, I remember that was when Simon Furman, he did one, which was like, and Hunter would live a lovely life going into the future. Uh... Ah. <laughs> then I'll hear make a drum. Yeah, he didn't have a good end. <laughs> no. Um, and the hilarity that is, in space no one can hear Starscream. <laughs> That's a terrible title. <laughs> I think I think I've heard of that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, that looking back on it really shaped the way uh, I am and the way I view fandoms. Also has one of my favorite uh, takes on genders in Transformers. Uh, and if you don't wonder, feel free to start. Uh, feel free to skip this part. Mm. Um, I used to read a lot of them. Actually, there was one on Deviant Arse. And it was like, it was mostly around classic Scrimlock and how everyone kept on assuming he was stupid. And he was just like, no, 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 I'm based off Marvel. No. <laughs> um, and there was one, it was an ongoing thing, which was, it went on for like six or seven years and then it got cancelled. And it was the guy, it was the guy, like, he had a lot of like Japanese action girl figures. Okay. And then he just got a bunch of Transformers in on top of that. And it was just like... Tidal Wave had a little girl who lived in his shoulder who popped out every now and then and went meep and went back in. Primus and Unicron <laughs> ran in the room, but they were basically just completely exasperated with the entire experience because it was out of control. Hmm. Um, a lot of action in it, actually. Um, Nemesis Prime was like this, I hate everyone, but I, I don't actually mean that much harm. I just like seeing you suffer. <laughs> wow. I think it ended because it ended a character from Final Fantasy thirteen came into it. One of the judges. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember um, 13. Jesus. Yeah. And then um, yeah, that story went unfinished. But um, I tried doing one years and years ago. But I well, writing one yourself? It. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but wow. I never had a proper setup for it. Um, I remember Seth used to do one. That was fun. Yeah. Um, what happened, Seth? Yeah, Seth. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heard in WTF yeah, engagement that. and all that jazz. Well done, yeah. poor woman. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're happy for you. We're sorry for her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, I. It was one of those things. I never really had one I followed, but I would love to find them because people get so crazy creative. Um, there was one I remember, which was basically just like Vector Prime tries to fix one more day, and can't, <laughs> which was fun. But yeah. I mean, did you ever get into the photo comic scene, Andy? I'm, I'd never heard of them, to be honest, until now. Uh, I was probably aware of them, but I never knew what they were called. I, I definitely never followed any of them. Mm. Like, if I ever saw them, it was always just a, a funny picture, and I went, oh, that's neat, and then just would have scrolled on by. They were never mm. my kind of thing, so th- this was all new to me. I hadn't heard of any of the ones that you mentioned or the ones that uh, Tentomon mentioned either. Mm. So, yeah, I- I'm afraid I've, <laughs> I've got nothing on this. 
<sighs> Andy, you're a failure. I am. I keep telling you this. You let Tintamon down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we also have a new uh, Patreon person, or a returning one, Ooh. I'm not sure. Chris Cash uh, is back. That's, an, um, that's a very appropriate name. Chris Cash, yes, coming in, <laughs> uh, joining up with Patreon. So, yes, yeah, sorry, we didn't have anything fancy or special last month, but, uh, you know, we had time off, so that was actually really nice. Uh, but we'll have something uh, Patreon-wise this month, won't we, Mr. Mikey? Yes, we will, because... I definitely want to talk about Gridman. <laughs> oh, I had, I, I've been trying to set up other shows with other people, and basically people's lives just keep getting in the way. So I'm just going to fall back on a, on a classic and say, Andy, let's talk about anime. I like this idea. It is good. It is mm. good. I expect it you to find out what all of the um, all of the references. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do a... Well, the Bible Black is in it quite a lot. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Not sure how much uh, I believe that, but... That happens to a lot of people in anime. It's a, it, I've seen it in... I've seen, I think I saw it in... You mean specifically the stab. Point. But yes. we won't say more than that. Yes. It's just like... There was not a scene where Akane just suddenly grows a dick and starts fucking people. <laughs> there if, there, if, there, been... if there was, I, we may have blacked that out through horror. <laughs> <laughs> Would we be surprised? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have probably, been surprised. There was someone at Trigger who had that storyboard, and he just kept on like trying to sneak it into planning sessions. And I was just like, no. Keep but... sending it to the animation house. <laughs> just kept sending it back. No, we won't do this. You'll do it. Oh, you'll do it. <laughs> you'll, we'll be, you'll break or I'll break. But someone's breaking. <laughs> Uh, pe- uh, Mikey, where can people find you on the internet if you want them to, and all that jazz? You can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo, and you can contact us over on the Moonbase Two Twitter. You can also send us emails for feedback at the Moonbase Two at gmail dot com. Uh, we appreciate anything. I will remind you again because I promised I would do remind at least a couple of times on this. We are our uh, sort of psychological analysis of the Transformers Collector with uh, Chris Vangelis. Uh, or Chris Ho as his real name is uh, came out and we definitely want people listening to that and we definitely want feedback so if you have listened to it please send us something if you haven't listened to it go listen to it and then send us something So, Andy what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as CCTFW on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW you can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forum so on Twitter we're on iTunes we're on Facebook we're on Libsyn we're on YouTube as Transformers Moonbase 2 uh, sorry, Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. God, it's been a while since I've done that. Yeah, remember, we couldn't be Moonbase 2. That's right, they wouldn't let us. Someone had taken that. Technically, there's another Moonbase 2 podcast, but we got in first. That's right. They do, like, they try to be the mysterious universe, though. They're not good. <laughs> Fucking throw that shade out, don't you? They're not good. <laughs> Damn, boy. <laughs> um, and if you want to head over to ccbunker.weebly.com, you can see all my nonsense and woo-woo. And if you go over to patreon.com slash moonbase2, and do two dollars each month, you get the extended vi- version of From the Files of Teletron Two, and it's a week early. And you also get the Moonbase Two Woo Woo episode where we talk about other stuff, uh, and will apparently be Gridman this time round. So yay, mm. yay! Uh, so yeah, first episode of the year. Um, it's gone okay, I think. It could have gone worse. Could it? Uh, yes, yes, it could. <laughs> I bought a mattress yesterday as well. That was something. What's it like in your world? What do you mean? I mean, is it exciting? No. It's it's really not. <laughs> but I am pretty excited to get a new mattress and hopefully get some decent night sleeping again. That would be <laughs> lovely. <a> <laughs> oh! Hey. And that's I'm where we'll end it. <laughs> we'll see you I'm next week, everyone. <laughs> Laugh at my jokes, please. No one else will. <laughs>